guys, welcome back to another video. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. If you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jai. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you enjoy gameplays and all that fun stuff, be sure to check out my um gaming channel description below. Also, my social medias will be down also. So sit back, we like, we are back with Mr. Nightmare. Three disturbing true movie theater stories, volume two. So sit back, relax. Let's get it. This took place back when the first Insidious movie came out. My like friend Charlie and I went to see the tenth really like screening of it at one of our local movie theaters. The theater we went to went out of business years ago, likely due to the fact that it didn't get enough business. I say that because every time we went there, the theater was completely dead, aside from maybe three or four other people at most. This mm. night was no exception. Besides Charlie and I, there were two other people in the theater, one somewhat larger woman and one scrawny man about 5'7". Mm. During the previews before the movie, the man kept getting up and switching seats. It immediately struck us as bizarre. Every time he'd get up, he'd look around the room and even look at Charlie and I for a few seconds at a time. Monster house couple. Eventually, he walked over to the woman a Small, few seats down from him and started man. speaking to her in a whisper. She said something back to him that we couldn't hear. Then he said sorry and walked away from her to sit at the last seat in the aisle. He was just two aisles down from us. Eventually, the movie started, and the opening scene to the movie was a bit scary. It was followed by this loud, scary violin sound. We noticed the guy two aisles down shaking his head, and he muttered something. Then he turned around at us, and climbed up to our aisle and sat down two seats for me. He asked if it's okay he sat there, and I nodded. He said thank you really loud, and I noticed the woman in front of us turned around to look. Charlie and I looked at each other nervously. As the movie went on, he was quiet after the opening scene, until the next time a scary scene came up. He the only seat directly next to me and once again asked if it's okay. I don't know why, but I nodded again. I guess because I recognized he may have had a disability or something. He went quiet again when the scary scene ended. But at the next jump scare, he grabbed a hold of my arm and pressed his head into my shoulder. I shook my arm to get him off and said, Dude, get off me. He apologized okay. and said he's just really scared. I looked at him and he Weirdo. just scared me. He seemed off. Way off. He told me he would stop, and he apologized again. But when another scary scene came up, he grabbed my arm again. This time he started rubbing my arm a little. I told him to stop again. Then Charlie and I got up and walked to a different aisle. The woman in the theater got up and left. I'm guessing because she was uncomfortable. Mm. As we were in our new seats, he turned to look at us for a while. We tried our best to ignore it, but it was too much. Oh my God. I can't he got up and started walking out of the theater. He got up as well, asking where we're going, and then he asked if he could take us out for dinner. Charlie said, nah man, we're good, thanks, and we walked out. We walked through the empty movie theater hall and heard the door to the room we were just in click open. We turned around and there was the guy, peeking his head out from the door. When he realized we saw him, he went back into the room. Charlie and I walked faster now to the lobby and told the girl at the front desk about the creepy man making everyone uncomfortable. She gave us a refund because the woman before us also complained about him. Okay, never mind. We then left and started walking to Charlie's house, hitting his vape pen and just talking about how weird and creepy that was. We were somehow able to laugh about it, even though we yeah. were also pissed that we just left the movie halfway through. On our walk home, we both stopped. This and we heard a rustle in a bush about 10 feet from us. It was just four, a muffled then. little laugh sound. Charlie pointed to a he bush in front of the house. And we could see that man from the theater creepily poking his head out from a bush. He asked where are you guys going. He said it with his tone that said everything to us, that we needed to run. We sprinted all the way down the street till I felt like I was going to throw up. Luckily at that point, Charlie's house was right there. We weren't being followed anymore. He looked weak and probably not fast anyway, but we weren't risking getting shot or stabbed. Something was very off about that man. Maybe he was drugged out, or maybe he belonged in a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. Glad we decided to run. Man, oh man. Talk about can I take you out? I don't care if anyone judges me, but I like to go to the movie theaters alone. My work schedule is all over the place, oh, and I often don't work weeknights. 
So on a stormy Wednesday night, a night not many other people would be thinking to go drive to a movie theater, I did just that. I always like avoiding crowds in anything I do. That's just how I am. It was 2017. I went to see some low-key movie that probably wasn't at the top of most people's must-see movie lists. I was the only one in the theater, just like I expected. I sat myself right in the center seat of one of the higher-up rows and put my feet up on the seat in front of me. About 20 minutes into the movie, I'd say, I noticed someone a few aisles down. I didn't notice them coming in. The theater was dark because the scene in the movie at the time was in a dark room. They weren't sitting in a seat like a normal person, though. All I saw of them was the top half of their head, peering over one of the seats to be looking in a direction that definitely was not the screen. It was still too dark to be able to tell if they were looking directly at me or not, but when the scene changed to a brighter background, it was you. the whole theater got brighter. Bright enough to see they were looking basically at me, but their face was so pale and lifeless looking, and their hair messy and wiry looking, I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. I'm an introvert, or just an awkward person, so I didn't really want to ask if there was something wrong. I viewed that as confrontation. The screen went darker again, and at the same time, the person lowered down behind the chair completely until I couldn't see them anymore. They were completely hidden from my view. I couldn't concentrate on the movie now, though. I was actually very uncomfortable. Actually quite terrified. I didn't get up though. I, I mean, you could feel nice. uncomfortable, just please. Many scenes in the movie passed. I almost forgot about what happened. Almost. Just when I was getting back into the movie, the person's head appeared from behind a seat again. This time much closer, only like three rows of seats away from me. I actually let out a holy shit and a loud yell because it genuinely made me jump. Now I was able to see more detail or features in their face. They actually looked lifeless. Their eyes, motionless, hung open, but still I somehow couldn't tell if they were looking directly at me or not. Now I could better see it was a man with long, unkept hair. I noped the F out of my seat and down the road to the exit. I had to pass the row in which the person was in to get to the exit door. Ooh. As I passed the row, I looked down it, and while I expected to see the rest of the person's body sitting hunched behind the seats, instead what I saw was something you'd see in a nightmare. There was some guy basically laying on the floor, holding up a severed head perched on a stick. I didn't stick around to see if it was some sick joke or if the head was real or not. I ran for it through the exit door, I ran out of the back exit of the building to the parking lot. I drove home in a panic, heart racing. That head looked so real. I got home and did some research about possible Shit, recent murders was. or missing people in the area, and I found something. After browsing a list of missing people in the area, I found the picture of a 17-year-old boy named Donald Watkins who had gone missing a month prior. And based on the picture I found, his face could have matched the head I saw in that theater. Wow. Of course, that could be my brain trying to connect any similarities. But the hair, the nose, the eyes, they looked like they could actually be a match. How did he the get next in? Day, I simply made a call to the theater and told them the story and suggested they check their cameras and see if anything strange came up. I gave them my number to reach me if they needed to. I never heard from them. I chose to not spend any more of my time on it. <laughs> I worked at a movie theater in Cobb County, Georgia called The Regal at Estelle. It was a very relaxed atmosphere because it's a quiet town and a quiet movie theater usually. Some weekends it would be busy, especially for big blockbuster movies. This happened on a slow night. I was working the graveyard shift. The theater was doing a midnight screening for some underground scary movie that no one really cared about. A few people actually paid to go see it. Obviously this meant I'd have to stay till the movie was over so I could clean and close up. Past midnight the theater was always basically dead. The phone at the front ticket desk was ringing, so I went from the concession counter to the front desk to answer it. After saying hello twice, some creepy, distant sounding voice asked me what time we're open till. By distant, I mean I actually felt like he was whispering into the phone, or like his face was two feet away from the phone. When I told him the midnight screening ended around 2 a.m., he said, I'll see you soon. I opened my mouth and went, I, I, but I didn't actually know what to say. He hung up. I didn't like the sound of that, and I'll see you soon. I went back to the concession counter to just scroll on Instagram and other time waster apps on my phone. Then the phone rang again. 
I didn't want to answer it because I somehow knew it would be that guy again. No one calls a movie theater that way. So, I went to answer it. Like the first time, I didn't get a response till the second hello. It was the same guy. He said into the phone, I'm on my way. I replied, sir, the movie already started. There's no point in coming now. I won't even be able to give you a ticket this late. He hung up. This had to be a joke. Possibly one of my friends. The voice just didn't sound familiar at all. As the movie was nearing its end, I started vacuuming the lobby and halls, then went to cleaning the bathroom. As I was cleaning the bathroom, someone came in and went to one of the stalls. That meant the movie was likely over, so I stopped cleaning to go back to the counter. People were on their way out, so yes, the movie was over. I waited till everyone was gone, then locked the door. All I had left to do was clean the theater, which wasn't a big job because there were so few people in there. I brought the broom in there and scanned the aisles for trash. There was a little popcorn here and there and some wrappers. It would have been a quick cleanup, but I didn't finish it. I heard this freakish giggle sound. <laughs> I had jerked to the left what to look down the aisles of seats. Is someone there? I asked. I hurried out of the theater with the broom. You in a whole scary scary movie ready to now. Use the broom as a weapon if needed. And as I was back in the lobby, the phone rang again. It was like perfect timing. I ran to answer it, and without saying anything this time, the voice said, Why'd you leave the theater? I hung it up and called the police, asking them to just get here fast. I waited in my car until they arrived, then told them about the calls and the laugh in the theater room. The police asked me to calm down and check the number from which he was calling and see if I recognized it. So I went to the call history on the phone, got the number, and put it into my phone. And it was the number for one of my close friends, Joe Peterson. Mm. That explained it. He was just messing with me. The cops laughed about it, and after I assured them I was alright, they left. I didn't want Joe to get in trouble. I went back in the theater room calling for him. I called for him throughout the whole building, but he didn't answer. What the? It seemed he left. I texted him and tried calling him, all ignored. I went home after locking the place up. The next day I went to his house just to talk to him because it seemed he was ignoring me. And that wasn't he told him. me he lost his phone, and he thinks it was stolen by someone at the bar. Oh, yeah. He didn't have Find My iPhone enabled, so he couldn't even track it or disable it. I couldn't sleep for nights, worrying that I was followed home by whoever had his phone. Being one of Joe's female friends, whoever stole his phone must have went through our conversations and gotten enough info to know where I worked. That horrifies me. I requested to my boss to stop doing the late night shifts for that reason. I didn't work there much longer though. If anything else ever happens, I'd update. But it's already been more than a year. I mean, when I um, work at the Boob Theater, I don't work. I don't work late nights. It's usually several people still in the building. What time do they? It depends on the movie. Yeah, but I never experienced anything like that. Like I said, I don't work the night shift. I only work the morning shifts, which is better for me because I can get work over with. You know. Yeah, movie theater. Can't go in peace watching the movie. The first one wasn't really that scary because it was more of a, um, a weirdo, those freaks come out at night scenarios. And the second one, uh, the headless. Ooh, that, that was the. Mm -mm -mm. So, tell me guys what you think about this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And have the most awesome, positive day. Till next time, you guys.